Welcome back, folks. Jason Mark Fed 4 here, back with episode 2 of our Factorio's Space Age playthrough. Tank's not here this time. He might join eventually, but right now I don't know. I just got done playing another game because I, I didn't want to get burnt out on this completely before I actually made any legitimate progress, so I'm now going to be working on completely mining out all this ore if I can and just simply, you know, well, obviously mining out all that ore is going to take a hell of a long time because there's like 17,000 in just this one drill. But as I run out, which most likely once one drill runs out, I'll simply delete it and move on and keep it in my storage or put a box like right here so I can put all the parts into that. And I'm going to keep refilling this so that I can actually uh, get more of the red research points here. I'm going to move this down just a bit without it actually disappearing because I, I still want to be able to hold on to that. I'll just pick up this stuff and put it away as soon as I get enough resources to build it. The main thing I'm concerned with is actually getting all the required drills put down. I gotta collect up a bunch of copper and iron plates so I can actually get this thing put together. two of these down. Put some coal in this one. Put some coal in that one. Get, just get those set up. We can actually go ahead and get the uh, proper pole set up going here. I know that as soon as those bugs get close, they're going to put a risk factor. It's going to be a risk factor for my factory, but I have to try to actually keep them away, at least for the most part.
Alright, now, we got four more boxes. We can put those over here. Go on down and slap uh, these here. We got the smelter furnaces. I have to get this just right so I can actually adjust the blueprint again because it was actually just, it was partially wrong. It wasn't actually just, it wasn't perfect. I had to adjust it again. That's good. That blueprint has been officially adjusted. Now I just have to get some coal in each of these boxes. At least four stacks should be fine. That'll last me a while and I can start pumping out a lot of ore. <laughs> Now, now that we got that handled, we can probably work on at least somewhat partially getting more research down. We would, we need to actually expand this by a good bit so we can get like maybe six of these, six of these these things down, and then get where I like have a box in between each one instead of this, and then have like four. So I need, I I need more metal. I actually don't mind moving stuff around honestly, like actually ferrying resources between two spots. That's actually my preferred way of doing things because, I mean, unless I actually abandon a factory, which usually if I abandon a factory, that means I've already tapped out all the resources in that area and I'm not going to be using that area anymore. Cool. I'm gonna 
grab all of these and I'm gonna go shove them in here. just gonna work on research now for a little bit until I finish all of the reds and I'll keep this this way because this is the most preferred way to make reds and I'll simply upgrade the uh, machinery as I get further along Once that finishes out, research, running all of that stuff off, then I'll probably stop for a, a little bit because hopefully by that point I will have at least some of this. So the processing is going good. That way that system will run for a long time and I won't have to worry about it uh, slowing down. No, you need to have like a large scale radar station, but it, a large scale radar station like that has to run off its own specific power grid because radars take up a lot of power and you want to have that detached from your actual power grid so that way if it gets shut down and you're not getting any power to it, you'll know your power system is actually under attack long before it's actually, you know, they destroy it, get to your factory. But you need to have gun turrets and walls, or at the very least gun turrets around your stuff. If you have some walls around it, that might stop them, but it won't stop them long enough, enough for it to actually make any real difference unless you layer it up like four or five blocks long. And that shit just tends to, it gets irritating for me because you have like four wall blocks for the walls and it's like, 
around all your factories. It means you can't really expand your factories. You need, so it's like you have to wall off the entire deposit that you're working on. As well as over here, you'd have to wall off this entire area here in a big brick with guns surrounding the entire perimeter so they'll shoot all the attacking enemies that might get within range, which means you'd have to make like a crap load of ammo for all those units. text tank or at the very least reply never mind I don't have to reply hello oh. hello you making another video or just working on the save I'm gonna I'm working on a video right now oh I see you're producing steel now. Yep. Noise. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I've seen, this is probably the most singular efficient way that I can actually get things done with, with as little belts as possible. Yeah. That way, I don't have to keep walking over belts, and I don't have to feed them often because I just stuff like over a thousand coal in each one of these boxes so I won't have to work with them for a long time. Yeah, I can see. God damn. And this over here has already been set up. I expanded that by one. That's been set up. Mining and processing on full scale. I've not even screwed the stone because honestly I don't really care about that right now. Other than I would that, at least probably get some gallon plants around here at least because our pollution is already almost reaching that bottom right base where the wind's going. I can build four gun turrets right now. All right. Uh, oh, see, uh, what am I, oh. I, I think this power ran right out. Let me grab some coal. The steam coal, the coal ran out on this generator. Yep. That's why everything ran off. Yeah. It burns through more coal the more power is being used. Yeah. Probably because we're overloading the system almost. These are almost, the first one's running at max and this one's almost running at um, almost max output. Well, so I say we should probably get another one of these. Well, I'm working on that right now. I'm bu building the guns right yeah. now. You want me to build one then? I'm building the uh, a third generator now. I just All had right. to finish building the guns first. Yeah, this would probably be the main section I would worry about for a lot of the with the gun turns and stuff, because this is probably what's producing the most of our um pollution and shit and then over there now so I'd probably put like one there one yeah here and maybe one up here uh, my game keeps lagging 
And that right there, I guess I'll leave it to you to fuel those with ammo. Yeah. And then maybe if you want to, if you find a good spot for another gun turret, you could slap it down and fuel it with ammo. Because I'm not really yeah. a good just a judgment of where a gun should go. I'm not really. Honestly, it's just mainly halfway of each radius of them. So like, how would I explain? It? Let me just build two real quick. I'm gonna swap my main weapon out. So, where's the radius of this guy? So, pretty decently. Probably. There. Uh, we're gonna probably have to start digging or cutting out some of this wood down here. For me to fully, like, kind of get this whole section done almost. Oh, I guess I'll work on that once I feel these stone harvesters. Oh, good. Okay, got that in there. I'm gonna get another two of you building. But I don't know how, like, you want the wall or anything to be exactly like. I'm kind of just placing turrets sporadically every once in a while in places. Kind of just to the edge of their boundaries and shit. I mean, so long as the, the enemies don't get too close to them, well, with them That's the problem. If I don't have, like, say if I put one here, that will defend more off than just without that there. So you're spreading so that's them out what, so that they have more fire. Yeah, like, if you hold your mouse over this guy, you will see he's in range of this one. So if the bugs get pretty close to this one, in ish, from coming from down here, he will be able to shoot them. And also, I think radar does play an issue in this. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, over that, all that. I'm curious. I'm Probably gonna have to set up a, a big radar station. Yeah. Like at least, uh, probably at least maybe eight radars, maybe even ten, so I could. I say ten is a good, good section of them, cause I usually run around ten and I hardly have to deal with bugs. It's just the fact that the updating the radars don't update very fast, so it's no, really, really no. slow and. That's why I like that one mod that has the ACT terror, because it has a much larger oh, yeah. area, and it doesn't take as much juice. And yeah. it, you can go like 10 of those, and, and how a massive area, and you can get daily, like, basically minute-based updates. Yeah. Oh, well, that's different. Well, shit. Uh, you know those big worm things we saw on the background? There's a small, medium, and big. Yeah, I'm kind of a. I I did not realize that. I would have expected that, honestly. Uh, ah. we're gonna want to definitely get a thing producing ammo and shit like that. Probably. What is ammo? For... Is ammo like a two-stage craft or one? No, it's only one. It's four plates turns into one ammo. So, four iron plates just turn into basically all that ammo. And we just unlock seal technology and shit. So, like, if we got maybe two we here... Probably, and... We could probably just put, put two things here and face the other way, basically opposite of this. Yeah. And just start making yeah. ammo that way. I'm making one of the things right now. Or one of the factories. After I build these last two turrets. But yeah, honestly, just a bunch of plates. Just need to feed into one of these. And shit. But I'm building the... There we go. No, not you. Oh, that's a little close. Build it there. I built two of these just in case if we want to build ammo a bit quicker. But let me select that ammo. Oh, goddammit. 
I was trying to select the ammo. Okay, I set them both. Now I just need yeah. boxes for the and, and uh, things for them ammo. to feed the ammo into. I uh, hear boxes and uh, things. I don't know if that's too far away or I couldn't really tell. Oh, that's how you wanted them. It should work. And then get the. I don't have enough materials to craft the other things. I got enough for one inserter. I need more. Actually, iron. So we might want to ramp up the iron production. Well, the iron is actually keeping up. It's just I have to stop the steel production. Yeah. Well, it's like. Technically not. We're actually make got a hundred and fifty metal on this one side here. Yeah. Then I would say just slap some metal in there. And I am. That'll remember make. this is only creating one mag at a time or two technically, but that's fast enough. Uh. Server started lagging for me. That's plenty fast enough. We just gotta be able to keep the uh, creatures at bay. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm kind of placing these a little close to each other, especially at the coal deposit. Enough to round each of these turns almost. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait until that ammo production is going up. Let that craft all that. One of these burner inserters down by the stone is out. Okay, I got these constantly making um stuff now. I switched four of the uh things over here with some um, fast inserters. Do you hear me? Mm hmm. The stuff that's making ammo, I switched all those inserters to fast inserters. Cool. They use a little bit more power, but they it should be a hell of a lot better and stuff. There, get the turrets operational right now. We might just barely have enough time to get all these turrets up and going with how much ammo we're producing. Yeah, oh, we're already out of stuff or ironing in the system. those around so they can produce a bit more. Actually, I need to do more. Uh. I should make that go a bit quicker on that right side. Yeah. Uh, let's get these going with ammo. Oh. What are you queuing up in the research? Oh, automation too. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, yeah, all that's gonna help and shit. Now, once we get that point, we just need to get a belt system, the factory prepared for uh, making of the green. Yeah, it should be. The green's gonna be very complicated. Uh, it actually requires a lot of different materials, unless they change the recipe and shit. 
That's the only thing I'm gonna have to, to think about, because half of the time I hardly even get to that point. Well, I'm fine. He's crafting. Jesus. I already craft all along? Fuck, oh, I did. But where are you saying? Uh. You were saying something, then I was uh, saying something about was, all this called the game. I was, just, I was just gonna, like, do it, like, like this with boxes and inserters yeah. and just. Make it as simple as possible so it's quick to work with without the a only bunch downfall is you're gonna need multiple of the production things to craft more than one item. That's fine. But not more it's gonna be multiple items crafting into one thing and like the research and shit. But I don't know what the research requires and all that. Well, that's why I put the production this well, I actually put the smelting first so we can replace all the smelters we have right now with the newer smelters as soon as we get that at least enough for the one smelter even if we have to make yeah. it by hand i think we need that in brick for the smelter to craft it yeah and like steel we're gonna need for it well i got i got a good bit of steel i've been collecting it waiting on it to actually grab because you're not letting it build up too much i'm just trying to get ammo and shit built now like that's the main focus I'm doing because I still have one two three three four turns to still fill and stuff maybe uh, whenever we run, mine out these resources we can yeah. flip this whole setup around and expand it further out with more yeah. Uh, smelters, maybe like two more smelters on each side, so a total yeah. of eight. Or unless, well, I mean, we probably won't need to do that when we get the newer smelters from the tech yeah. because they'll be able to smelt way faster. Yeah, they will easily be like the what are they called? The advanced melting and shit like that is gonna help us a lot because it's better furnace and it does this stuff a lot quicker because i only had like what six of them out of a 20 or 10 system of these stone furnaces and it was able to keep up with everything i was crafting from just six of those that's just how fast they were producing on my save oh no this was also the old version of the game But yeah. Is that going again? Yeah, this projectile damage is gonna help us with um the turns and crap. Good. Because mainly that's just going to focus on getting the turns doing a hell of a lot of damage. Uh, we might want to get a brick system going because I'm pretty sure we need bricks for the the one furnace we want. Let's take um, it ready. We... We'll get ready to expand uh, the science area by a little bit. Alright. Uh, I say probably like two furnaces would work. One on each side or something. Probably. Because I don't know I see I don't know how much it takes for one stone and shit. It takes like for just one brick. Like one probably five. For some reason. Uh let me see if I I need more on me. Shit. For the inserters and shit. We got a lot of copper here, so that'll be good. Yeah. I'm down with making five of the 
of the fastened herders, at least. Just making the rest of the resources and stuff. There. And where do you want the Just output? right up here. Right on top will be fine. There you go. Try to make it as narrow as possible so it doesn't take up a whole bunch of space. Yeah. Uh, I got... There we go. You might have to place that there to get this uh, guy. Or... We'll better to start saving up bricks now. Seems like it takes three to make one of these bricks. I was just mainly going to use them to start walling off an area, like down uh, here at least. You need at corner. least two more uh, fast inserters to feed into these other bo these boxes from the belt. Oh yeah, true. Well, I had one on me. I'm just making another one. But yeah, um, probably around this node, I'm probably going to make a wall, or at least on this section at least, so it kind of defends off from the bugs down here. And I just wall off this node, uh, the stone node, to probably like, here maybe, and then you go up inside and kind of make an angle up here. All right, I'm gonna go up here and collect more of this iron metal because I need some. Yeah, I also do. I'm gonna grab that first box if you want the second box. Put that in there. I'm just gonna turn the steel production off for now. Cause we yeah. got it. We got enough steel. We need more iron metal for now. So I'm gonna build up. Let this stuff start building up more. Yeah. There we go. Got that current going. Got that current going. Okay. All the left side or far out left side currents are running. So far. This is the last little bit of ammo I have. I'm gonna move these turns, actually. Place you there. And you there. I started on a wall, a little section of the wall down here. Uh, you need one more uh, burner up there, or uh, generator. It's fine. Unless you're saving. Right. I'll build I'll another one whenever I get a chance. Uh, grab you and you. Nope. Heavy Not armor. Awesome. Yep. We can build heavy armor now, or we have a little bit better protection. Yeah, no okay. Hey, even though it doesn't Honestly, the modular good. armor actually helps a hell of a lot. From what I've experienced. Having a portable, like, little shield thing. Yeah. I never actually got that far into the research. I have. I was hoping that maybe if I got the shield generator and then the personal laser defense, several of those, yeah. I could probably just defend myself against alien attacks instead of having everything. The spitters, to... honestly, with the shields, it just increases your health with the little blue bar, but that's like all it does. And then I had to add like multiple solar panels for me to be able to like keep my suit regening that shield. 
And honestly, it helps a lot with the spitter attacks because it mainly goes to your shields. But also, eventually, if you get a big enough base, it will go to the your player's house. Looks like the red science is basically all but stopped because we don't have any more uh, metal. Yeah, I've been using it all for fucking ammo. We still got 40 in that one and 40 in this one of the science packs. So that's another 80-ish. That's like 104 right now for that. Throw this into this guy. What are you throwing in there? Just a bunch of old stuff. I'm gonna throw my old pistol in there because I upgraded to a submachine gun and stuff. Oh geez, we got like almost a hundred and something left until we um research this uh, weapon speed or weapon shooting speed and stuff like that. Aww. Oh, this one's out of uh, stone to mine. Shit. Oh, you starting on the one setup? The, what are they called? Radars. Are these the tier three ones? Or are tier these just regular old? These oh. are the tier one. All right, this one's in level yeah. three. And well, all these are named different. They might be level three, but I mean, hell, these are the first ones I got, so they must be super strong. Maybe they. This just says this Maybe is they... not level three. Yeah, okay, it's just the names on them are different. Radar John E Gantry three, and then all yeah, right, these are well, all different. They, they, these radars are basically pushing the generators almost to their mat, so you can yeah. literally hear it in the steam engine generators. <laughs> yeah, you can also just hover over them. This was drawing 750 or 750 uh, or watts or and that, watts. That, uh, and that's yeah. per generator, so it's maxed out its total generator. Yeah. Where it's like each one creates what? 400 power? Available power 900 kilowatts. Yeah, it's right now we're using 750 out of each of these. Or it's splitting it between those, and the max kilowatt this thing can output is 900. I'm probably gonna, I, well, let's see. Is it finding anything in the area? It's exploring a smaller area. We got something yeah, top to the left. Yeah, you know, we got Yeah, that red left. spot's been there. Well, we got copper into the top left of us, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the only other red dot I've noticed and stuff. I'm gonna go investigate. Oh, yeah. I tell you, if I see anything on the map, I are you exploring? Am I close enough yet? Uh, no contacts on the map from what you're able to see. It just looks like it's one nest. Honestly. That's the only thing I'm seeing on the map. You want me to come up there and help? It looks like a ground spitter. That's a ground spitter? Yep, it's a ground spitter. Or a worm. Oh. Huh. Ow. Maybe. I'm wounded. Uh, I gotta reach in real quick before I could go back in. Eat fish and stuff. Uh, game. What are you doing? Oh, it's up here. Oh, 
I thought I was near it already. Oh well, yeah, that's all the targets that took him off the map. Oh shit. Uh, we got a base down to our bottom left. That's decent as well. Into our bottom right. So that's not good. Well, then let's hope we can get this get the defenses set up. If anything, we're I'll gonna have probably... to defend left side hard and I'll... also bottom right. Probably gonna end up having to use uh chop all these forests down so I can actually uh, yeah. use wood instead of stone or coal on the steam engines. Yeah. Because I feel like wood would be a better resource to use for the steam engines. Honestly, it wouldn't exactly because it would. Oh, we're actually out of power down here. Again? Uh, we're burning. Yeah, that cold. coal. Yeah, this coal just sucked it. Sucked it right up. Yeah, we're. We might want to get another uh, boiler in here so we can start. Yeah, because we're hitting almost 600 watts per kilowatts on all these uh, generators and stuff. Got it turned on again with a little bit of coal I had. But I would still recommend bringing some coal down there. I am. Jesus. If you want to start, oh, there we go. Yeah, I was about to say, if you want to hook that up and stuff. And put a little bit into both of these boxes, because this generator is about to uh, put out on us. Or this guy is. There we go. Yeah, we're down to 240 something watts being consumed. Well, that's good. We got, got enough, all the we got enough generators here to actually defend, and we can have enough space yeah. to expand as needed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised they never designed a system, like a, a function in the game, that actually drains the water from these lakes. So eventually, the lake yeah. water would like it would dry up. Cause I mean, there's no water like a source coming from anywhere. So I would assume that eventually. No this would be drained off like it would be so yeah that's dry. what i would think as well i'm starting to getting a wall over here with the uh, steam stuff because now we got a lot more we're going to probably be producing a lot of pollution A lot of our burners down here are out on the, the stone mine and shit. This one is just doesn't have anything to mine. Do you think one wall would be enough? Oh, I've three layered up a wall and they've still, after they evolutioned and shit, they can easily break through it. That's what I'm always worried about. Yeah. Is their evolutionary process, because they okay. end up evolving so fast, even with all, with all the pollution. It's it, honestly, even with, they evolve because of the pollution. That's even the with reason. all the trees, I thought the trees would actually help with the but they don't like right now they're helping because like if you look towards where we are it's a bit more redder than the outsider ones or very far out even though because we're in the dead center this pollution is going to be very red eventually but, like if i do that and that 
and like say if all the pollution goes away and we turn everything off for who knows how long eventually all that pollution will go away but some areas can be a brighter red than others and the brighter reds are so usually where basically uh, if we were to basically just cut the power from the area and wait for all the power yeah. the coal to run out it would literally just slowly run out of power or no, the, the pollution the... will slowly drift away because of the trees. And shit. That's another reason why we don't want to cut down so many trees is because... And also, these are not helping because these also produce pollution. But it's mainly just the steam generators and shit. And the furnaces. I think there should, that should be enough space there and enough stone to work with for a, at least a little while. Yeah. I'm kind of just making out perimeter of a wall right now. That's good. Especially on this side and then the bottom left of us because that one nest is also down there. And we're about to hit the bottom right nest and shit like that. So that's not going to be fun. Oh, we got a decent crew. Oh, we got a nest to the top left of us now. And the top right. There's two major nests to the top left and top right. And we also got crude oil next to that copper. Yeah, that's one thing I'm going to... Probably... That's the main thing we're going to need for like the modular suits and all the stuff that comes with it. Crude oil was probably my favorite thing in my first playthrough of Vancrio. <laughs> I set up such a large operation and yeah. I got to a point where I was literally just using flamethrowers to keep the alien the creatures away. Yeah. Because it wasn't like they weren't able to get close to my fuel depot because my fuel depot was literally had I had a whole line of pipes going around the outside of it. Yeah. Except for like a few, a small break in the pipes where the gates were. Yeah. And the pipes should have like a, a full line of fuel, whatever fuel the flamethrower charts would be using. And they would be yeah. spraying the fuel, the fire, and all the en enemies that came too close. Oh, right. and say the range is all that like, great, but that's okay. At least we're almost done with this one research we're doing. Taking its own sweet time. Yeah, it's like almost 300 we needed for 100 of the red resources to finish that one research. And now it's 75 for this research. And then we're going to have to start working on the green research and all that. See what it requires. Yeah, I put some more um, iron into that. Stuff. That's 40. That's not going to be enough. We're going to have to get more, hopefully. Yeah. I'm also trying to get... I kind of split up the iron between the the ammo making and the other thing. Now we're really going to want to surround this whole place with walls because the nest, the top left and right and bottom left and right are going to be pretty nasty to deal with without really anything. Well, we're doing the best we can with the resources. We I know. Have. Got more ammo. I'm going to have to split the ammo between these two. These guys up here. Five damage, zero point five physical. Right. Kind of just walling off this little section because this is where half of our stuff is. Probably need another twenty or ten. Oh, we're out of research this time. 
throw this little bit I have on me and What are you doing down here? I'm just gonna feed extra iron and ear nuts and maybe we can... You know, these are not even facing. That's fine. I wonder if these things are gonna speed up at all. What, the miners? I know the miners are gonna speed up at all. I'm... Trying to We're almost done with Grand Rapids Church. I'm honestly just trying to figure out a way I can speed up. The, okay, uh, they're gonna take belt and inserters, regular old inserters. So we need for belt iron plates and one iron uh, iron gear. For inserters, we need an electrical chip, iron gear, and iron plates. Like right now, I could build 20 of them. And how much do we need? 70, at least 75 for the one race, the advanced melt, melting research, stuff like that. That gets me fluid and stuff. That will get me down, get us down to that. And then we need oil processing. Yep, there's the modular armor. Okay, and then that to advanced computer boards, and down to that. Okay. What about this? What will this get us? Honestly, if we got on um, military science pack, we could also get a uh, uh, rock launchers and shit like that, and that will help us get down to, or even the tank. Fuck, I don't know. I think we we. I mean, honestly, I would love to have a tank, but honestly, I don't think that's gonna do much good unless, I mean, really. It honestly doesn't. Like, I've tried the quad before, and it doesn't last long with the machine gun on it. But fuck. I don't know what ammo the tank takes. I that think it takes rocket ammo. Yeah, most of the heavy vehicles take rocket ammo in order to deal yeah. with Yeah. And then artillery is way the hell off. We need pretty much every research in the game for that. Yeah, I understand you'd have to pray one hell of a base to make that. And we, and we also need, like, tungsten to be able to make... Or craft tungsten to even get the science pack. We will then science pack for that. And stuff like that and we would even get the rockets before then the rocket silo actually we're not even that far off from that alone we just need the blue research and the green and the red to be able to get it and so that's what we have to go through oil processing and all that I mean what will green get us oh that gives us the flow com follow uh, drones and construction and stuff like that and then that will get us advanced metal processing too ooh that could be another good thing we could get is uranium mining and if this planet supports uranium and stuff yeah it probably uh, does it's probably a nuclear planet or nuclear power plants are going to be our next best thing without putting too much pollution in the, the sky and that also unlocks the atomic bomb. But honestly, everything to get to the nuclear age is only we need the red, the green, and the blue uh, stuff. A pet science packs, and then we just have to get uranium more to unlock the ur uranium processing and then research the nuclear plant. Then uranium ammo, too. 
I would also. I would How not is uranium it. not pollution? Uranium mining of uranium does, usually does like significant damage not exactly. to the environment, doesn't it? Not exactly. No, because uranium is radioactive. If you contain that radioactive material, it won't pollute anything. But the that, only way we, I think we can do it that way is via. I don't know if they have like hazmat suits. That usually just requires a hell of a lot of freaking boxes just so you can keep... No, actually it requires lead, leaded containers. In certain containers, not even boxes. Like a leaded, lead-proof container? Yeah, so it's lay surrounded by multiple... Every reactor has multiple layers of lead and other materials to soak up that radiation. That's why you see the radiation and all that... And all that go like... How do I explain it? Basically, when you see a reactor start for the very first time, the water will turn blue. That's because when those rods drop, it's making that power. Basically, you're just being able to see the power from it creating. But also, like, I've had a... My grandparents actually... War, my papa actually worked as a nuclear welder. And he's the only one out of his whole group that actually survived that shit. Everyone died from radiation poisoning. Because that's how radio. I don't fucking know. Because basically, thing? yeah, he's still alive from kicking. So he's long from what I know. Retired, like yeah, he's long retired now. He works on Harleys and shit like that. But um, literally, nuclear anything that even that in dive going stuff to under or deep sea welding is a very dangerous job, and that's why it pays so good. Deep sea welding, the only main uh, danger for that is probably pressure. No, actually. It's, it's mainly the waves and stuff, and the diving bell you're in, that's what it's called, the line can snap, and you're stuck at the bottom of the ocean. And they can't pull you back up? No, they, they don't know where you landed. The only thing they have for you to do is sit there and hope they can bring a big enough chain and and long enough chain to find your bell, diving bell, because basically how that works is it's lowered down by a ship. That ship will try to stay in that one area, and it will basically, and also the other thing is getting lost down there, because it's pitch black down there. I'm surprised they haven't made, like, uh, like thermal imaging or something for your home. It wouldn't seat. work. Really? Thermal imaging works off heat, not cold. Night vision? Any, night vision, maybe, but probably that. No, it actually wouldn't work because night vision works off um, light. Actually, it the very little light that produces overnight just it amplifies it and then makes it. That's why night vision is like green and all that. Because it, it's another color we can obviously see better in than yellow or anything else. So we just don't have the technology. Yeah, no. As of yet, they should be able to see down there. And we kind of do. We main, They mainly use flashlights and stuff. Like, really, really bright flashlights and crap like that. I'm surprised they don't have, like, some kind of underwater flare that they can fire up as an, <laughs> like, as an emergency. Like, if you, get you know it's the main reason why how they know if the diving bell snaps? If that boat... Because that diving bell is super fucking thick. So if that boat jerks up, that usually means in all that slack that comes out of that chain, you know something went wrong. How does and the chain snap? Rust, um, honestly just the batter of going against the oil derricks out there. Cause that, that's all concrete. And that's bashing up with a tremendous amount of force. And I don't know how the concrete stays there, but... But, um, the chain will eventually wear and wear down. And most companies that work out there don't want to fucking replace them. Because they're very expensive. And then half... And then half of the time is, like... They literally attach it... Because you have a tube that's feeding you oxygen down there into your diving bell. And they would usually attach a thing around that tube and bring down the chain. And you would literally have to go out and fucking... 
attach that chain. That's why they teach you in that, how to attach that chain. So, okay, so wait. So, the bell is what you come yes. down in, right? Yes, you come down so, in that, based when you get yeah, into there, that. Is there anything in on the bell that the worker is attached to to keep him... Mainly a radio and, and shit. No, I'm talking about where the worker can actually find the bell again. Or does the bell have lights or oh, something on it? So it has like, lights on it, but it's also when you go far enough away, you're not going to be able to see those lights. Because that's so just how dark it, it is. Have like a, do you have like a little safety chain or like a rope or something? Nope. So it's not really you just only have a small, thin-ass tube in your auction tank. That's all you have. And that's attached to the bell or not? The little tube supplies your auction tank with oxygen if you badly need it. But half the time, that can easily get snapped or caught on something that cuts off the oxygen. And so there's only really, like, you gotta be, like, extremely careful down there. Yeah. That's why so many, and also, if you try to resurface quickly, there's this thing, you know the blood cells in your thing? They're part oxygen. So if that oxygen expands, that's gonna ca cause multiple blood clots in your veins, basically. So and that will cut off the blood. If you yeah, that's why like you that. say like you're at 100 meters, go to 75 meters, stay there for I don't know how long, and then go to 50, then 25, and then reach the surface. In on diving bells, they're made to go thousands, not thousands, I think. However deep a oil derrick out there is, probably at least reasonably deep, but not too bad. Yeah. It's probably at least a thousand or more, because those things right, can go pretty now. deep. We got twenty yeah. left. Is that gonna be enough? Or not? Uh, we're probably gonna have to make more, to be honest. I'm in well, also red research. We're gonna have to make more of. I'll get more. Uh, I got this. These two to get in the uh, red research, but yeah, that and there's a couple other drops that are still very deadly. Like, a tourist for, like, seeing sharks and shit. And if you're not in the cage, you are, you're risking your life pretty damn bad. Because there's people that swim with sharks just not even in a cage. What? That's why they tell you not... So basically what how sharks see the world. is if you see some... Vibrations. Actually, no. They feel the vibration. Kind of, of in a way. But also, if you're shaking a lot and they can visibly see you with their eyes, they think you are prey. Or, yeah, prey. So okay. they're gonna come after you. That's why, like, you see people, uh, what is it called? Surfing? They think that's a dolphin. Or some sort. Or a whale or something. And they think, hey, that's food. Let's go kill it. I just grabbed those, and honestly, there's really only, there's myths about how to get a shark away. You can shoot it with a flare gun, honestly, or stabbing it in the nose or something like that of some sort. If you have something I, sharp enough, you can probably just stab it in the eye. That too. That'd be the fastest way to get it to fuck off, and it probably won't you that. actually be. Actually, you'd be surprised. I've actually seen sharks been stabbed in the eye, and they will be even more pissed at you. Probably. I w it wouldn't surprise me. They'd probably get yeah. extremely, like, highly irritated. And you also gotta remember, like, Great Whites, they're... It's, they move, they have to constantly move. So any shark has to constantly move. Yeah, that's how they breathe. Breathe and, and also keep their energy. They run out of energy. They if they stay still for too long, they fall asleep and then slowly die. If they yep, or the, if they get flipped upside down as well. That's how. That's how killer whales are able to kill sharks so easily because they learned if they flip them over, they go into this stun like a stunned state. And then they can eat them. Yeah, or kill them. Just fucking bite them because they're almost like, I think ten times bigger than them. I'm like, most oh, sharks. Hell no. That's like a damn killer whale is probably worse than a damn shark. You think honestly. that's bad? Think of the biggest whale but bigger, and that's the biggest of the octopus. 
a great giant octopus. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I think it's called the yep. giant octopus or something. Yeah, the something giant like octopus. That. Yeah. Uh, those, you really uh, have to worry. Those, about. those usually stay at like, like black very depth. deep water. Like black depth, like the dark yeah. zone. Yeah. They don't ever come up here to the light zone. Actually, they can in a they, way, but they can, I've seen but ships they don't. pull those things up. I've seen big ass ships pull those fucking things up onto a dock. I'm or not well, a dock, but a I'm, crane had to pull it up on a dock. I'm, like by themselves, naturally they don't yeah. come up. I mean, yeah. Not I guess, you. I guess if you really wanted to yank one up, you fire several Dude. harpoons or something at it, and they yank actually it don't out even the use harpoons. Water. They actually use these three prong hooks, or treble hooks they're called, but they're like a foot in like diameter and a couple feet long. And width is probably about a decent size of your hand. Like bigger than your hand, obviously. Because that octopus is going to try to fight its way out. And they just put a whole bunch of meat in it, and then they just. They get a really fast, like, pulley or something. Winch, I would say, probably. And they will just try to yoink that. That thing can drag boats that are he pretty heavy. Well, yeah, they don't want to come out of the water. They're going to fight no. with everything. That... Honestly, I what I would be more terrified of is if a freaking... It uh, uh, would be like a Leviathan. I know it's not real. It's hey, like you, I, it's hey you don't know that. We've only explored 1% of our ocean. It's a mythological creature because yet, we've yet to see something. But that's like... A Leviathan is basically like probably twice the size of a giant. Dude, think of the one in Sonotica that's dead, in the Ghost River, I think it is. Yeah, I think I don't know. Dude, is that have you actually? Yeah, that is a Leviathan. It was pushed down there, and it just eventually died because it couldn't hunt anything because everything was too small. In those Leviathans, that thing was would have been miles in like. I, Super I, long I'm and just big. Curious, is the Leviathan? Are there any ones that are actually alive in Subnautica, or is that not? Yes. What they, is that not what the, the Reaper, Reaper of Leviathan is? is one in the the, the Dragon King or yeah, something dragon, like that? The Dragon Leviathan is the one that breathes yeah. fire and is always angry yeah. and pissed off at you. Yeah. That's another Leviathan, but honestly. There's multiple different Leviathans. Hey, we just yes, actually got that. Yes, we can actually. Yep, we need we need um steel and bricks. Luckily, I got a lot oh. of steel. I still got plenty of left. I got like 300. I have 694 fucking bricks on me. Well, but if you want to take some of them, go ahead. I got a couple hundred. <laughs> Oh, thank God we finally got those, because that's going to be a big help. But yeah, like, Leviathans and shit are... The Reaper is, like, the smallest of the smallest, even though it looks big than to us. But Jesus, dude. Some of this stuff they made for mods for Sonaka on PC, you'd be surprised. I feel like they tried to scare you with that Think of this. You know the Aurora, the ship you crash on in that game? Think of something even bigger than that. I like and I'll longer. Hail. I'd be like, oh, hell no. That's really what one of the creators did of um, the game. They made Literally, a they, bone yes. structure, or did they make a live Not a bone structure. One of the modders of that in the game actually made a one-to-one -one scale of that creature. And it takes up basically in the entire map. That must be. Wait, no, wait, isn't the Subnautica the ship that you crashed on the Aurora? It crashed on a plateau, right? The main, yep. the main part of the whole. Actually, no, it didn't. Actually, it actually, it actually crashed on an underwater volcano. Most likely. That's actually inactive or whatever. Because no, it's active when you go all the way down. That that's the actual lava from yeah, that volcano. I know that, but like. There's an entire ecosystem on top of that volcano. That volcano must yeah. have been, you know, covered up by old ash and you know, rock and shit. From Actually, no. The precursors are, I believe that's what they're called. The, like, the gun that shoots you down and all that. 
that's actually who buried that volcano. Nice. And if that volcano wanted to, it would easily blow all that away. You know, I'm really, it can't. I'm, I'm really curious if we can actually, if actually, we actually got found like that planet, if we could. Yeah. I'm like, we need to steal that technology for that giant laser. Oh God! Put that on a fucking. You know, it's another thing. thing. Put that on they the actually added ship. um. Put yeah. That on a spaceship and use that. Space. Actually, space in right. the second Sonotica, Sonotica blows here. They added actually two more of the Zaius into that. One's like a weird-looking like. Think of a I fish that eats sure. under it. Didn't they have a Leviathan that was like frozen in ice? Yes, actually. I've seen that thing. Oh, so that's three. Were you not confirm if it's actually still alive or dead, actually, because it has the Karar bacteria growing on it. The I Karar is the infection of Tanaka and shit, after the, or and during I'm, the first one, then after. I'm, I'm really curious if that thing is, like, how the original infection actually got started. I wonder if it's... We don't know. It's the, all, the precursors, all the precursors of all the buildings died because of it. And then we meet Alan in the second one. That somehow turned himself into AI or something. Like Alan that. is it? Alan is the guy you meet in Sonata to Blow Zero, who they talk through your head and shit, and then eventually you get to build his body. Doesn't he kill you? No, actually, he actually helps you meet the rest of his kind. They're actually still alive. Somehow, in some Technology. like other dimension. Cause you literally go through a big ass portal and shit, from what I've heard. That's all I know. Way to actually drop a bomb, bro. What? You fucking asked about it. That's okay. I wanted to know. I asked. I was like, I bet you never. I even for me, I've only finished the first Sonica. I've even, I've swelled it for myself. I so. never, I never played the second one. I didn't really think it. I Hell, I never even beat the first one. It was just too really. Crazy. I was too fucking scared. I couldn't even get close to the damn reapers without fucking squalling and running away. You know, it's the one thing you got to do with those: get a uh, noise, or, like the noise buoys or something like that. And I would just use a shitload of those in the cyclops to keep it attacking that. That's really all I would do. I usually the there's like these I noise. I close to those things. I don't create it, but I run up to them and yeah. I'm like, hi! <laughs> and I'm like, pow, pow, with the gravity gun, and I'm like, bah, bah, You know what's the bah, sad bah, thing? Bah. There's actually one other Reaper of Zyathan in Sonica. It's the Ghost of Zyathan. Oh, yeah, yeah. That thing like, is fucking weird. I've seen it. It really is. I was like, nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm good, bruh. You know, I actually managed to get that Titan sub. I actually managed oh, yeah. to get that down there with the fucking dragons, the dragon flight. Yeah. I managed to get it down the stairs. Uh, the yeah, for me, you know, it's the one thing. You good? Yeah. Oh. I was gonna say, um, there actually is the, a bottom to that zone. Oh, yeah, I know. It's at the lava. I think. Unless you just keep going down. I no, guess. it's not even the lava. It keeps going down farther than the lava point. There's yeah, actually creatures that walk the bottom of that place. Really? I forgot what they're called. Yeah, there's three-legged creatures, and they walk the bottom of that ocean. At, like, the very bottom of the Very bottom of the dead zone. Yeah. Can you even go down there? Yeah. You just use a shitload of auction, but you just build a... You know the straight conveyors or entry things? Yeah. The tubes or whatever the hell they're called. Yeah. You lay just build that down and then put a a hatch on the side of it and there you go. How do you actually and just put a ladder going down there though? Dip it, like, you connect it from your main base and that will that main base will supply it with auction and power. So you, All can you just need build it. from inside it and you just keep going down. No, no, you have to repeatedly get out of it. Like you get out of it, build a couple and then build another hatch. Then go in, get your auction, in, and go back up via the ladders, and get more resources to keep building down. 
I feel like That's... eventually the game would spawn a ghost alive or something to try to stop you from Oh, it doing does. This. It like, does, no, but if they don't can't... attack the base. It's like, no, you can't go that way. Yeah. The game Literally, like, the, no. uh, I've seen people do it and the ghost of Violsons team attack their base from going all the way down. But I... you're going to have to deal with them a hell of a lot because they're going to keep repeatedly spawning. I don't know how long we've been at this. I don't know if it's been over an hour. Or I don't long. know. We've been just talking. I honestly, I think I'm probably just gonna stop here and then uh, uh -huh. see about the ending of this episode. If you liked this episode, please do leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you again in the next one. Uh -huh. Goodbye.